evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, bring this regular meeting of council to order for September the 7th, 2021. Result of the agenda for the or sorry, September 7th, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Just before we start our meeting tonight, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, newly elected Councillor Don Bobick back to, uh, to Council. Congratulations on your election uh, during our recent by-election. And uh, we wish well and we, we welcome you as a member of this Council. <clears throat> I'd also like to welcome with us tonight, observing, I guess you might say, uh, Mr. Waldner, Assistant to the CAO, so welcome to you as well. For those um, are watching on video, I guess there may be some that may not see everybody here. So we do have in the room uh, Mr. Harvey, Mr. Baldick, obviously, Councillor Baldick, Councillor Morio, and Councillor Friesen. And then on video, we do have um, CFO, Mr. Vita, uh, Chief Fedorcha, and Mr. Uh, or Director of Recreation is Mr. Fedorcha. Result of the minutes of the August 3rd regular meeting of meeting, I'm sorry, and the August 18th special meeting be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving on to communications. You can see there, there's a package there of uh, invoicing quarterly, and there's also the multi year plan for. Um, the RCMP more um, information for you uh, I guess oh, I'm sorry there is a resolution here so <clears throat> sorry resolve that the RCMP April to June 2021 invoice package dated August the 19th 2021 be received moved by Dipper Mayor Wintoni seconded by Councilor White discussion as I was saying that there's uh, inf information there with the invoicing and uh, quarterly, uh, or sorry, the financial plan as well. Councillor Morio. Um, not particularly with the invoices, but can we put an invite out to the new staff sergeant to come to one of our town meetings to explain this new format of invoicing that they got and provide us some more information on the new uh, collective agreement that the members um, have approved and how that's potentially going to affect our expenditures with the attachment. Yeah, okay. we'll schedule that. We can do that. Councillor uh, Delorier. Um, in the invoice, it references, a, I can't remember exactly where what the verbiage is, but it references that uh, retropay is not included because it's up for discussion. Is there any more details forthcoming from your committee that you sit on, Mr. Morio, or Mr. Poole? Have you heard anything? Like, should we be setting money aside for that? Or, you know, I. I I hate for this to bite us. Him, him and just were one of the first uh, associations to um, write literature to the FCM to lobby the federal government that uh, due to the previous federal government's lack of communication with municipalities on that topic, that the federal government should be responsible for any back pay or retro pay. Um, uh, decided yet or move forward. It's just uh, the AMM is it's one of their lobby points uh, with FCM and towards the federal government that they should be responsible for picking up that cost. I'm sure that the federal government's going to counter saying that uh, they've been the division is making us aware that they are in negotiations and that we should be putting money away annually to um, pay for those retro, but. It's significant uh, change that they're talking about the retro calculations. So, okay. those discussions go in our favor, not the other way around. We can inquire to see what it's looking at, too. I doubt they'll tell us, but we can always inquire. Um, CFO Ganita, do you know anything on that or <coughs> comments on that at all? <coughs> No, I have no comment. Thank you. So we'll reach out to the staff sergeant and uh, have some further discussion as far as what the uh, retro will uh, look like if uh, something that we have to cover. So further discussion? 
All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Seven seven point one. Result of the director of public works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion. Councillor White. Yeah, I'm just uh, noting the comments relative to the cemetery, and I'm just wondering if you can bring council up to date uh, relative to what's happening. A handful, handful, one or two. Talk to me about concerns about. Uh, tidiness and the lights were a bit of an issue and I'm just wondering if maybe the cemetery committee is, has met his meeting and could bring us up to date what's happening out there. Stones coming over but I see the stones are being repaired further in the report. Mr. Harvey? Yeah, I just had some uh, guys out there working on it, whipper smithing in that. Uh, we had a couple of uh, uh, resignations so we're just a little short on that power we're doing our dates but we did get a few people out there to try and address some of the concerns on the length of the grass and that. Is there any plans to increase manpower or change somebody from within the system, send them out there or anything like that? Yeah, that will be addressed in the next budget and uh, it's just these resignations are planned so we're kind of short right now. I, I don't know that it has to be a budget issue, maybe just pull somebody off job X and put them over there, which hypothetically, in my mind, they'd have to pay the same salary, no increases, but you're obviously losing at the other end. Yeah, like we did uh, do that last week, it's just now that we're a little bit short and we're doing these digs, yeah. it's taking up all the manpower. But when it was rain, we sent some people out there, like not heavy rain, but light rain, we sent some people out there to clean okay. up a bit. Uh, second question, uh, troubleshooting the Moneris issue at the landfill. I don't know what a Moneris is. That's just the uh, debit machine. Pardon? That's just the debit machine. Perfect. Thank you. Answer it. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Morio and the Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Regarding the Moneris machine at the landfill, this is not the first time that I've read and the report that we've had in the issues like that. Is it a systemic issue or is it a uh, or is it something different? You know, other one, there was one related to the internet, and then there was the old one, the core, like it just uh, from use for the amount of time that we had it afraid. Uh, just the error came up with the new one, so we had to get a, like I called them, they ran through a couple things, and we said, okay, yeah, we'll send you a replacement. So it's not a consistent problem with the provider that we might need to look at something else. It's no, I don't think so. It's only been two and just that one really close together. Okay, sounds good. Deputy Mayor tell me. Mr. Harvey, just in regards to cemetery, I know that we have um, totals of what we have, what we spend for the cemetery, and looking at the issues that have been arising in terms of whippersnipping, grass cutting, and and that type of thing. Is there ever a thought, or maybe it has been done in the past, have we ever looked out, looked into um, contracting out that service to the cemetery? Is that something we could look at? Um, and I know that we've always had the struggle with manpower to put at the cemetery as well. Is that something that perhaps at a cow meeting we could bring up and perhaps look at tendering that out? Um, just from ex uh, um, an example, I guess, is Minnetonas and Bozeman, they did contract theirs out to a, not saying that I want to take work away from anybody, but knowing that we have a, 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 a labor issue with consistent people there. And they've done it, they've been really happy with the, with the services. I'm wondering if that could work for, for us, not saying that we need to, but Perhaps it's something to look into. Yeah, we can definitely look into that. Uh, there would be, uh, like the CBA would come into effect with that. Yeah, and of I'll, course. I'll, I'll just interrupt there. If, if we're going to have any more further discussion on that, that should be done in camera, okay? So if, if we want, we can add that to further discussion in camera. Okay. Anything else? No, that was all I had. Okay. Any further discussion? Councilor Bobbin. Uh, just uh, CAO Cooler, just a, a couple buildings in the town of Swan River here that uh, are 
still standing after fires. I wonder if there's any way forward on that for the journey. There has been. I'll let Chief Fedorchuk answer if he is willing. Chief Fedorchuk? I believe he could. Yeah. So the uh, the small structure on 7th is waiting a contractor to come and take it down. Um, and the larger structure on 5th is still tied up with the current process that we reported earlier. Uh, Mr. Pedorchuk, is there a time frame on the first building you spoke of? Uh, the owner tells me that he was contacting uh, their contractor today to get a firm date and they're supposed to let Mr. Lewicki know. Thank you. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 721. Result the July and August protective service report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> 722, resolved that the July 2021 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Seven point three council reports. Start with Dipper Marilyn Tony. I have nothing to report this time around. Thank okay. you. Uh Councillor Friesen. I also have nothing to report. Okay. Councillor Morio. Um, just the only formal meeting uh, I had was with the uh, school division. You know, we're all there with their presentation on Bill C64 on their their views of it and uh, what uh, they thought we should do to help support them. Um, but since then, it, with the new uh, interim minister, it's sort of become a new point. Uh, but definitely something on the radar. But it was definitely an insightful. <coughs> Uh, conversation from the board of directors there um, bringing up the light uh, issues that I never thought of but, uh, it was a very good presentation um, it's good to see um, with public works and the cooperation with MIT that Main Street West is now done uh, I took a spin on that today didn't lose any teeth or headache running through there so it was definitely a, um, a treat to go through there uh, as compared to what it has been for the last decade or so since I moved to Swan River, um, the block old corner. Um, also, just a word to the wise from the public uh, works department, but not from the school. Uh, school's opening up, uh, again, first day of school tomorrow, so just a reminder to all the people out there, and uh, work crews and whatnot, that kids will be walking around uh, morning and afternoon, and a lot of increased traffic in the school zone, so respect the uh, Cool zone speed restrictions that we have in place year round, and uh, you know, uh, watch for the kids. And lastly, uh, just I wanted to make a comment on our uh, purchase services the, um, discussions that we have with Swan Valley West. Uh, I think we'll all see that. If people have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, to any of the councillors or the administration of uh, the councils. Um, but the uh, <coughs> goal is uh, we're looking out for the town of Swan River. And, Looking out for the best interest, um, what we feel is a fair uh, share uh, for the cost division of what's out there for those services. So, uh, if people don't have any or have any questions or not understanding it, um, feel free to get us a call. Okay. Thank you, <clears throat> Councilor Delorier. Uh, I had a library board meeting. Uh, it was. Uh, Uneventful, except I'm sorry to report that uh, Glenn McKenzie has resigned as uh, as one of the town's representative on the library board. So um, I guess if CAO Pool could add uh, a blurb in the town section of the paper saying we're looking for a new uh, 
a new member to uh, represent the citizenry on the library board, that would be great. Uh, and I just want to thank Glenn for his service to the library board. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, had two uh, conservation district meetings. Um, one was a regular board meeting. Another one was a. The board also sits as as the grow committee, and the, the grow committee is uh, uh, the committee that's responsible for distributing the money. That I, I don't know if you guys recall, but it was about a year ago that the province had set aside like massive hundred of millions of dollars for environmental projects in, in an endowment and the, the dividends of that endowment I guess are are filtered out through these uh, through these grow committees that are subordinate to each of the conservation districts for improving uh, basically in, it can be used for incentive payments there's all, all sorts of different projects so that was our kind of our inaugural meeting of our grow committee um, well, I have two things I want to bring up in camera. I assume we're going into camera tonight. They're, they're both related to the shared service uh, negotiations. Okay. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else to report. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councilor White. A few meetings. Uh, we all attended the call meeting where we talked about shared services. I remain optimistic that we'll come to a peaceful solution. Uh, we met at length with PMH. Uh, recently as I stood on that board and uh, it was an interesting comment came out that we don't have a number problem with our doctors we have a distribution problem uh, we have some difficulties getting them out of the cities wherever they may be and uh, I, I mentioned earlier about the new CEO the variants are a big concern with PMH at the moment and they suggest that 99 percent of the people in the hospitals right now with in the ICUs in the hospital have no vaccines and certainly some people who have vaccines are in the hospitals, but not in ICU, it appears. Uh, part of the big problem with that, uh, the people who are going to the hospital with COVID is finding space for those individuals. And the dark side is uh, elective surgeries. Knees, hips, cancer, heart, pick a number. Those things are all being backed up, backed up, backed up because of lack of space and lack of medical professionals. So certainly it's a concern of PMH. I met also recently uh, via telephone with UCN, Red River Community College, and PMH, and the mayor is also working on this. I thank you for that, sir. Uh, ideas about recruiting uh, medical professionals. Our, our council has a template for uh, doctors and nurses, and uh, hopefully in the near future, members of this group will go up to UCN and will uh, take those young nurses, wannabes, out for lunch. And the, the thinking is that we will get LPNs converted transition to BNs in Swan River. And hypothetically that would have caused more younger people, local people, which is vital in the whole discussion, the local people might stay. So I remain excited about that. I want to compliment the Swan Valley Museum people for uh, keeping our history. And without those people sharing and storing all that stuff out there and making it still work, it's unbelievable. Uh, I also attended, as all of us did, the uh, Swan Valley School Division of the G5 relative to B C64. I'm not sure whether I, I agree with uh, Councilor Moria whether we need a letter. It appears to put in Never Never Land. I also want to echo your comments, Your Worship, and welcome Mr. Bobak and Uriah to our council. Looking forward to working with you and Don, in your case again. Uh, TSR MRI and uh, compliment uh, yourself, Mr. Poole, and your team, and uh, MI and uh, Minister, uh, Minister Mr. Wojciech, MLA Wojciech, for making that road. It's, it's just phenomenal. So, 64 I've got. Uh, I would ask the mayor when he gets invited, uh, our office gets invited for the LPN graduation day. I certainly would like to be there as part of the medical professional recruiting team and, and bring some message to them. And that's about it, sir. Thank you for writing it down. That means a lot to me. I don't know what you're writing, though, do I? No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. There's a set of plans. Uh, it would be fantastic. To see. Uh, we will, uh, on that note, uh, Councillor White, we'll know that in a week's time. Perfect. Thank you Less very than much. a week's time. <clears throat> uh, okay, again, uh, welcome, Councillor Bobbick. Uh, uh, probably nothing for you to report. Maybe there is, but go ahead and uh, let us hear what you have to say. This is Mary Dagan. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and the management and go 
move ahead. Uh, I was had a little bit of a report on the watershed there, but Councillor Dory stole my summaries. So just to speak to that, I am the chair of the Horn Lake Watershed. I also sit on the board of MAW, which is a uh, associations of municipalities of the watershed. So uh, I sit on that board too also. Uh, the GROW program is a, a very time consuming thing. We have to look at land, we have to monitor land. It's uh, what could go into production, what can go out of production. It's uh, uh, farmers will be paid to keep it. They can farm it. It just keeps runoff, uh, fertilizer, all silt going into the rivers and keeping the water clean. So there's lots of different things there. So I would probably be looking into some of the things that maybe be used here closer into town that may benefit some towards the town of Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor White, did you have something? Yeah, just a query, uh, Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, yeah, I can. I will. I can volunteer Swan Valley Sport Fish if we can be part of that mall, if our input, and we have manpower, woman power, people power, we have a little bit of money, if we can help in those applications, I'd certainly uh, I volunteer our team. Okay, we'll let you guys uh, iron that out uh, during one of your uh, fish enhancement and conservation district meetings. So, but, Thank you. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Okay, for myself, uh, La, I, the last month, uh, I guess, because we have had a meeting for, for a little while, but I had the opportunity of meeting with uh, Chief Zastry from Wisconsin First Nations. Uh, he took us on a tour with uh, CO Pool, and uh, uh, he gave us a you know tour of the, the new facilities they have, school, water treatment, and so forth, and what their visions and, and so forth are, and is also uh, dealing with their uh, substance abuse and, and program that they've been working on uh, within their community and where they want to uh, grow and maybe perhaps involve other communities not only First Nations. Uh, we also talked about development and their plans of development on some of their own First Na or their own treaty lands or First Nations lands in within the town of Swan River. Um, following week I guess it was roughly we also had a meeting with Chief Janai and Chief Janai from Sapatoya Cree Nation. Uh, also we talked about development as well, so it, within the town of Swan River, so there's there's lots of things going on there, as well as a discussion with UCN on some proposals as well. So um, we've been in talks with uh, a lot of uh, organizations, including uh, the MMF, on uh, proposed developments within the town of Swan River. So uh, we, we've got a lot of things kind of on the burners right now, and, uh, and Council will hear more about that uh, as we uh, move forward with uh, those discussions. I also attended the uh, discussion with Swan Valley School Division regarding Bill 64, uh, and, and more so like the, the opportunities that are created within the town of Swan River, or the valley I should say, as far as education and, and our own voice. And I think that was an important piece, that when we made presentation to the commission, we, we as a council even went before the commission and said that how important it was for our school division to have a voice. And we were a unique uh, region, and we had some, uh, some great people, some leaders that have taken care of that in the past and, and, and had a vision for the future. And it even goes to show how much they've been working with not only within our own K-12 uh, education system, but also with uh, the trades and the partnerships they've created with Sapatoya Cree Nation, Wasquisipic, and also with the MMF, as well as UCN, uh, Albert Chartrand uh, Friendship Center. So there's lots of uh, uh, partnerships that we see that they, they're working on it and growing, and that's gonna benefit not only our community, but our peop the, the, the people that come through our community and live in our community and, and create opportunities for them. So um, I found that it was a meeting, yes, about Bill 64, but we also heard lots about uh, what their visions are and, uh, and what they have done for uh, creating opportunities for young people in our community. And I guess I shouldn't even say young people because there's people that are some uh, adult students that have taken advantage of some of those things and created better lives for themselves. And I think that's the goal all the time with education. 
So with uh, Bill 64, I think we heard a lot about that, and, and like Councillor Weiner Morio had said that we think that it's pretty much a done deal anyways. We'll see as time goes on. Again, I was mentioned earlier, Main Street West project. Um, it, it's, uh, it goes to show how uh, a discussion and good partnership and agreements when you're, they're written um, uh, and, and explain fully how we can come to an agreement and, and benefit everybody and save money. And I have to thank, obviously, uh, MLA Wolchuk on uh, on lobbying on behalf of us to MI, but also to our administration that had worked on uh, that agreement, and it made a lot of sense. And we've saved ourselves money, but not only ourselves, but the people of the province of Manitoba for uh, that project. So again, kudos to all those who uh, helped make that project a success. And now we see the. I guess the, the benefit, the reward of it, and uh, uh, just entry into the town of Swan River now from the west side, it's, uh, it's, it helps to showcase our community and uh, we don't have to consider uh, the bumps and everything else that came along with it. So it looks really good. So, uh, you know, from our, from, from our council, definitely to Public Works and, and the team that had worked on um, sidewalks and so on. They did a, an outstanding job. I know that there's some students, summer students that worked on that project that might be gone now, but you know, thank them too for the, the good work that they did and, and the contractors that uh, got the job done in a, in a reasonable amount of time. So I think that clears it up for me. So uh, we'll move on and uh, we'll leave the rest for CL Pool. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, that I've highlighted in my report. You'll see in my report. First, I want to thank Maxine Zamzow for the by-election. That was a very smooth process, and uh, she made that very easy for me. Uh, the COVID restrictions, just to update council, uh, <coughs> we are dealing with those in every department. The recreation looks like it's going to be obviously uh, the hardest to walk around, so expect some updates from the director in the coming coming days. <coughs> Uh, I'll be sending a strat plan workbook to council uh, most likely tomorrow for our 14th Cal meeting so we'll we'll go through a small exercise uh, explaining our goals there but uh, you will be sent the document tomorrow to continue on with that process uh, as the mayor said we're dealing with multiple developments in town and I'm just uh, trying to steer those in positive directions and Again, make those seamless as, as we possibly can. Uh, try and get some some those to fruition. Uh, the negotiation committee, just a heads up, I guess council uh, can also expect updates on negotiations in the coming weeks. Uh, and what I need from council for the AMM meetings is your priorities for the for the ministers' meetings. Uh, we can discuss those later on in the meeting, and that's all I have. I also just want to miss one thing I think is very important. Our discussion with shared services or purchase services with any of our municipal partners is important. And uh, like Councilor Morio had mentioned, that it's important that we have a, a ratified agreement that is fair for the ratepayers for the town of Swan River and for the ratepayers for uh, any of our municipal partners. And that's the goal. Our goal is to make sure that we have an agreement. Our goal is not to come out of this without an agreement. We want an agreement, but it needs to be fair. And that's the goal, and we have to stand for that. So that's the goal where this council is right now, and we will see where that heads in the next little bit. But again, I want to make sure that our municipal uh, rate payers know that we want to make sure that this is fair, and we want to have an agreement, period. So that's the goal. Moving on to uh, 8, new business, 8.1. Whereas school boards are an important part of Canada's political landscape and have helped build a universally accessible, publicly funded education system that is among the best in the world. And whereas school boards offer communities the opportunity to engage directly with local representatives and to participate in setting a vision for education. 
Communities can advocate for their educational values and can hold their representatives directly accountable for school achievement and focus on equitable access to education. And whereas school boards reflect the values of the local community through essential programming, services, and support supports offered to the population they serve. Their operations are transparent and through community involvement and open dialogue, they can trust, they can build the trust that is necessary for good governance. And whereas the province of Manitoba proposed Bill 64 to eliminate school boards and the critical role they play in vocal voices making local choices and our community's democratic participation in public education. Be it resolved, the town of Swan River opposed the province of Manitoba's plans within Bill 64, the Education Modernization Act, to remove local democratic accountability from public education. And be it further resolved that it urges the province of Manitoba to table or withdraw Bill 64 so that it's, so its legislation maintain the right of the community to democratically elect its local school boards. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor White. I'm not sure if it's appropriate or not to, to drop a letter to, uh, to government. It appears, it's not disappeared, it's just put over to the next, to the next level after the uh, leadership race. It appears it's done. But maybe it isn't, so maybe a letter from our board might uh, speak. We can do that. Thank you. Councilor Delorier. Um, at the uh, school division's little seminar there, they also indicated they'd like a, a letter from us as well, indicating whether we supported this or not. So if you give one of them as well. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.2, result of the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020 be received. Moved by Count Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Any questions in regards to the financial statements? Councillor Delorier? The levy that was receivable in 2020, is that Mountain's contribution? Terry, can you answer that question? Sorry, Mr. Ganita. Look at this. You might say. Uh, just, just give me a minute and I'll answer it. It's Minotonis Bozeman. Oh, so they, they didn't pay for 2020? For, did you say for Mountain? Minotonis Bozeman. Oh, sorry. Okay, I thought you said Mountain in there. They may have paid in 2021, but they didn't pay by the end of 2020. Yeah, actually, 2021. what that's that's true. They okay. did they did pay it in, in 2021. Okay. It's not it's not reflected in this document. That's, that's right. Correct. I do remember. So, and so I guess further on that note, uh, Deputy Mayor and Tony, do you know if who's outstanding for 2021? I do not. I do believe that uh, we did receive all of the contributions, okay. but um, I would need to double check for okay. sure. Okay, so we'll find that out. Maybe yeah, uh, I can, can ask them yeah. and answer that question. Um, Councillor White. Uh, with your parent, I use that word, loosely a demise of rise. Is that a fair statement? No. Okay. Then I'll take the question back. Okay. For the discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Whereas Rail Safety Week is to be held across Canada from September the 20th to the 26th, 2021. Whereas it is in the public's interest to raise citizen awareness of the dangers of ignoring safety warnings at level crossings and trespassing on rail property to reduce avoidable deaths, injuries, 
and damage caused by incidents involving trains and citizens, whereas Operation Lifesaver is a public-private partnership whose aim is to work with the public, rail industry, governments, police services, media, and, and others to raise rail safety awareness. Whereas CN has requested the Town of Swan River, Swan River Council adopt this resolution in support of the, its ongoing efforts to raise awareness, save lives, and prevent injuries in communities. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan River support National Rail Safety Week to be held from September the 20th to the 26th, 2021. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor White. While we're on the topic, uh, I see two uh, significant developments in our Valley community. One at LP, $30 million. Yes. Uh, one at Richardson Pioneer, north of us, uh, millions and millions. And I'm going to assume that both of those entities were made possible by CN upgrading, repairing, fixing their rail lines into the Valley. So I would encourage uh, you, Your Worship, to drop a note to Mr. Sean Finn is the executive VP of uh, CN, a good Irish lad, you know it. And uh, just say thank you for the work you've done to, to help our valley. And I don't imagine uh, most people don't get enough thank you letters, not that we need them, but I'm sure Mr. Finn, I, I sense his hand on this whole process. Thank you. Thank you. For the discussion, <coughs> all in favor? It's carried. 8.4. Resolve the town of Swanover purchase a John Deere 770 GP from Brant for $279,340 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobbing. Discussion? Councillor Bobbing. So that comes, I was reading, comes with a five year warranty. Well, not, does that include the oil samples and all that sort of thing? Okay, I'll let, I'll let Mr. Harvey answer that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the five-year full machine warranty. Okay. That's about it. Thank you. Mr. Harvey, is there anything else that you want to, this, this uh, where the funds come from or anything like that? Uh, yeah, it's from the equipment reserve and uh, that, uh, Three bidders on this one. They sent a few different models. We were looking at the Group Four, and so we demoed them all. And uh, one that our guys liked the best was also the lowest price. And uh, we have a counselor with lots of experience uh, in the RM, and so we consulted with him, and that's the one that he recommended as well. So everything kind of lined up nicely on this one. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.5. Resolve the Town of Swan River sign Amendment 1 of the Environment Impact Assessment Agreement with the MWSB. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Can we get some discussion on that? Mr. 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 Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so this one, uh, it was originally uh, 60000 That was based on the uh, Manitoba Water Services Board estimate. And uh, then the proposals came in and they were a little bit over that. Uh, so that's why I recommended changing it to 70000 we had previously budgeted, budgeted 120,000 uh, prior to the Manitoba Water Services estimate, uh, so we do have the money for it, and it's a 50-50 cost share. Uh, so for going from 60,000 to 70,000, we go from 30,000 to 35,000 for a contribution within what we budgeted. Okay. Uh, Councilor Delorier. So this will still have the actual assessment will still happen this fall. Yeah. Okay. They won't run into any weather or weather issues going this late in the year. Shouldn't. Shouldn't. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor. Opposed. It's carried. Eight point 
10.1. Resolve that account, the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 27902 to number 28028 totaling 2,272,385.59 as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 27921, 27923, and 27924 voided and returned by Canada Post. Moved, moved unknown or uh, addressed. Uh, <coughs> uh, payroll counts checks number 4918 to 4926, totally 102,163 and 70 cents as listed on Schedule B. Payroll counts checks number 4927 to number 4934, totaling 87,591.94 as listed on Schedule C. Payroll counts checks number 4935 to 4943, totaling 103,516 and 67 cents as listed on Schedule D. Direct deposits in the amount of 9,615.82 as per Schedule E. Direct deposits totaling $575 as listed on Schedule F. Direct deposits the amount of $228,987.28 as per Schedule G. Direct deposits in the amount of $5,896.26 as per Schedule H. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Second by Councillor Balding. Discussion. Councillor Delorier. Not about any one specific thing, but uh, Mr. Poole, earlier in the day I had asked you about like the amount that uh, administration could spend up to before it had to, even if it was budgeted for before it had to come to council. And some of, the, so I'm, I, some of these things I see are over that amount, but like, I mean, it's not like we're not going to buy a hot water tank for the Zamboni room, so I don't know if we need to look at that again. As long as it's in the, it's according to the procurement plan, if it's in the financial plan, we have a, we have approval in the financial plan up to those amounts. Right. So, but the these are in the financial plan, but they're over those amounts. They didn't come to council. But I'm like I'm not arguing the fact that we don't we need a hot water tank for the Zamboni room. But right. it's, I think maybe we need to look at that again. I guess is what I'm saying. Because the hot the you know it was, is it was that an example? Or yeah, that's an example. There's eighty five hundred dollars. Okay. So it's over the. The threshold, right? I guess that that project when it was approved, that would be the go, right? Yeah. So there was a project to to change that out. I don't remember that. Or yeah, that it's a, capital, and the, okay, that's the. Or, okay. Brendan, am I correct? Is is that part of the the capital on the on the pool? I've been operating actually for the arena. It's part of the new and replacement equipment fund, and yeah, it did go over by five hundred dollars. We're absorbing that in the building repairs portion of our budget. Okay, so it it was a budgeted item. Yes. Okay. But it's still over the threshold. Yeah. And so I guess yes, that's my point. Technically, that Some, would have to come. Yeah. So I, I think either we need to be mindful of that, or we need to revise that policy. So the according to the policy. The manager of recreation is allowed uh, seventy five hundred to twenty thousand, up to twenty thousand dollars. Okay. So that's the chief financial officer, superintendent, or director of public works, manager of recreation, and the fire chief, up to twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm done. Further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 10.2, result of the financial statements for the seven months ending July 31st, 2021, be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, just a question to administration, not particularly to the financial statements, but uh, how are we doing with uh, uh, property tax collection, are we on par of what we normally are, or behind, or where we're at? I can't answer that right now unless Mr. Ganita can. I can definitely get an up council an update on that. Uh, I'm at. just curious how COVID may or may not potentially be affecting that since there was a lot of um, 
term of that last year, we complied with asked to delay it. And this year we did, and there were still some concerns. So I'm just curious as to if that had any effect in people um, paying their property taxes this year. CFO Ganita, do you have any response to that? Yes, it, the collections are pretty much the same as past years. COVID doesn't seem to have uh, slowed down the collections at all. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else, Councillor Morio? No, For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point three: Resolved of signing officers for Swan Valley Employment and Training Projects. Two check, two checking accounts at the Swan Valley Credit Union B, Derek Pool and Terence Ganita. Further resolved that Kim Kurelik be removed as signing officer for both accounts. And further resolved that the Plan 24 account and the previously used for short-term training and an inc incidental cost for clients to be closed and their balances transferred to the Swan Valley Employment and Training Projects primary checking account. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? I guess this is just a process of, of uh, controls. Controls, exactly. It's a cleanup of the yeah. accounts. Yeah. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Ten point four. Whereas sections three twenty six of the municipal act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections three hundred six and three hundred six point one provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for the Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations by Manitoba Assessment Services on August the fourth, tenth, sixteenth, nineteenth and 27, 2021, be made to the 2021 property and business tax rules with the resulting increases totaling $5,337.89 and resulting reductions totaling $8,162.87. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.5. Whereas the Town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E <coughs> and set the fees and charges for works under Clause 252-1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling seventeen thousand seven hundred twenty-nine and ninety-six cents, therefore be resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding tax property tax roll and collected in that matter under subsections two fifty-two of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective October the 1st, 2021. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor, or sorry, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> 11 bylaws, 11.1. Resolve that bylaw 11 2021 being bylaw of <coughs> council indemnities be read, be, sorry, be received and read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delory and then Councillor Morio. I see the highlighted portions. Is there a change in those highlighted portions? Uh, yeah, there's a Schedule A attached. So we don't have, uh, I guess, a, a council indemnity 
how to how to move forward. I guess do we just keep them the same? I I just researched uh, what inflation is going to be like, but keeping in mind that <coughs> negotiations are coming up. But. We struggled with that. Yeah. Um, I guess the my my comment on the on the uh, highlighted portion, though, but like uh, number two C, is there a change with that particular? I knew about the schedule A, but two C, oh. is there a change with that, or how come that was highlighted? Uh, previously, it was uh, rounded to the month, correct, Mr. Oh. Ganita? So we just shortened that up. Okay. Any further? Council Morial. Um, Council Dory sort of asked some question here, but uh, and then Mr. Poole's response was sort of, or I guess answered. Uh, my question was who came up with those increases for 2021 and 22? Yeah, I, I just researched projected inflation rates, but uh, <coughs> they can be changed to whatever council wishes. Yeah, this is first reading. This just opens that up. Council chooses in, in, the, in, in the process, in the second reading to, or in the third, to have nothing, then that's the council can have that discussion. Okay, yeah, I, I think this might be something that could work in conjunction um, with our negotiations. I don't want to be showing, maybe yeah. feeding our own mouths well trying to determine that fair collective agreement with our own workers. So right. uh, this is just first reading. It'll take some time before we can bring this, probably bring this back. Uh, but, uh, we can ensure second reading after negotiations are final. Yeah. That would be my, I was just going to suggest that, that this, our second reading or whatever, or amendments come to this post our collective agreement, provided that they proceed as scheduled and not get delayed again. Yep. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 11.2. Whereas the province of Manitoba has passed Bill 4, which repealed the Shops Regulation Act and the Retail Business Holiday Closing Act, except for Remembrance Day uh, hours between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Whereas Bill 4 amends the Municipal Act to allow municipalities to apply their own restrictions through bylaw. Therefore, be resolved that Town of Swan River Bylaw 12, 2021, being a bylaw to repeal Bylaw 25, 2017, be read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3. Resolve the bylaw number 13, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to amend its bylaw number 3, 2020, which provided for the expenditure of borrowing of funds for rehabilitation of water mains, water and sewer services, road structure and drainage, and the provisions for temporary water services, including auxiliary works thereof on Main Street from Provincial Trunk Highway number. Number 83 to the CN rail crossing be read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Balbic. Discussion? Councillor Morio. So just, just for confirmation, this is just an updating of the uh, interest rate um, and it's a continuation of the project that we started last year as uh, so it was more formally authorized this year's budget, so this is from last year's budget that's just updated the carryover percentage. As far as I know, it's just the interest rate update. That's correct, Mr. Ganita? Yes, the uh, amount and rate are now uh, determined, whereas the previous bylaw was just estimates. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 11.4. Resolve the bylaw 14, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to amend its bylaw number 9, 2020, 
which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the repair and renovation of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center, Whirlpool, HVAC, and building envelope included gathering, planning, designing, and other related requirements be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> 13. Resolved the pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We are discussing some legal items, purchase services, cemetery. One more, if we could add rise to the. Yeah, okay, sure. Thank and you. rise. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? 